what's going on everybody this is josh roman over here at heaven on wheels i am inside one of our awesome uh limousine buses uh limo buses party buses whatever you want to call it this is a uh freight liner uh what is this 35 passenger limousine bus uh with a restroom in it uh, so awesome for big groups and going out of town and things like that so football games but anyways uh that's not what this video is about this video, I am coming to you from inside the bus because uh, I get questions, I get asked all the time, get tons of questions uh, as to how do I start a limousine company? Especially in this pandemic, a lot of people are looking into um, different avenues of revenue, how to add more streams of revenue into your personal wealth or your personal finances. Uh, and a lot of people are out there looking for extra ways uh, and thinking that the limousine business is uh, easy money and uh, quick money so uh, first of all I'm gonna dispel that rumor it's not easy money uh, there's a lot of work that goes into uh, owning a limousine company it's not the uh, you know not all fun and games going out and bachelor bachelorette parties and weddings and that's it um, you know when you're dealing with moving vehicles when you're dealing with um, things that can break down no matter how much you try to prevent them uh, when you're dealing with chauffeurs or when you're dealing with a you know, a bus full of 30, 40 passengers, when you're dealing with uh, insurance, when you're dealing with, um, you know, just your day in and day out operations of owning a limousine business, storage, uh, office space, uh, answering the phone calls, it, 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 it's a lot of work, okay? So, um, you know, if you own one or two limousines, obviously it's a little bit easier than if you own a fleet of 30 or 40. Uh, if you own uh, a car service, it's a little bit different than owning uh, a stretch limousine, right? Which, you know, cars weren't made to be cut in half and stretched. So uh, there's just a uh, unique, um, you know, unique challenges with every single kind of business. Uh, and if it was easy, everybody would be doing it, but it's not impossible. Um, so in today's market, you know, because of the pandemic, a lot of limousine company owners find themselves in a very tough situation, us included. I mean, our our revenue has probably gone down, uh, well, I know it's not probably, it's gone down over 40% in 2020 over 2019. So we are 60% of 2019's revenue um, for a business uh, of our size. Um, and that's actually pretty good in comparison to a lot of other limo companies out there. You know, and what's kept us afloat is been has been uh, us being a retail limousine company. And by that, I mean vehicles like this, not uh, corporate work, not shuttle or airport transfers, but um, nights out, you know, parties, um, you know, date nights, uh, quinceaneras, birthday parties, weddings, things like that. Although the wedding market has also taken a huge hit, um, people still kind of want to get out. Um, social distance, of course. Uh, no more is it, you know, these buses, it's very rare that these big buses go out. Uh, the smaller limos are going out a lot more because, you know, smaller groups, uh, families and stuff like that are going out a little bit more than uh, than big, you know, big groups. So, but with that, I'm going to go over a couple things that uh, I get asked all the time. How do we start a limousine company? Uh, what's the best way of starting a limo company? And what's the first thing I need to do? So first and foremost, uh, we talked about a little bit, but you need to decide what kind of limo company you want to be. Um, and by that, I mean, uh, don't have a identity crisis, okay? Uh, no where you want to be, what type of limo company you want to do or become, and and focus on that 100%. Don't try to be a little bit of everything for everybody. Um, here at Heaven on Wheels, we have uh, really strived to be the best, most unique limousine company in our area. Uh, we offer the most uh, unique vehicles that before us and and uh, th there weren't basically they weren't available. Uh, so we owned one of the first. Uh, Chrysler 300 limousines back in 2007 when we started. So we were 14 years old now, going on 14 years old. Uh, and our first vehicle was a lower to the ground uh, Chrysler 300 with black rims, black custom front end bumper. Um, it just looked really elegant and really cool, the kind of limo that I would like to be in uh, at that time. So uh, that's the kind of limo that we started with. So ever since then, our goal was to be unique and different, have unique type, uh, unique vehicles. Um, you know, and currently in our fleet, we have one of the only uh, you know, the only Ram pickup truck with, uh, with you know, a bed where passengers can uh, tailgate and party, sit down and, and have uh, and play music as well. 
Uh, we own the only Dodge Challenger limousine in town, the only one that I know of with three jet doors. Um, I think there's one other one, a couple other ones in the country, uh, but uh, you know, the only one definitely in Texas that I know of with three jet doors. Um, we own the only pink Escalade in, in all of Texas that I know of, and one of the only pink vehicles in North Texas that I know of. So uh, just unique vehicles has kind of uh, set us apart from the pack or set us apart from the industry. Um, so, but that's not the only kind of limo company there is. You could also be an airport transfer company. You could be a shuttle company. You could be a motor coach company. Um, but what I've learned over the years is when you try to be a little bit of everything for everybody, um, you don't focus on one type or one individual uh, industry. Um, you know, it could be the death of you. I mean, unless you have the capital to be buying all different kinds of limousines and and types of vehicles and everything like that, and you know, um, a little bit of everything for everybody is kind of uh, difficult to uh, be able to afford. So. Uh, before I get to number two, guys, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, I do a lot of dumpster uh, rental business videos, but I'm also going to be doing a lot of limousine uh, company uh, videos as well, just because those are the two industries that I pretty much know the most. Uh, learning from scratch in my dumpster rental business, uh, learning with you, uh, with my viewers on YouTube, uh, and, and giving as much advice as I possibly can in the limousine, limousine industry. Uh, on this channel as well moving forward so um, you know again going back to number one retail corporate bus stretch shuttle coach uh, all different kinds of uh, limousine industry you can get into research that a little bit uh, which also brings me in my number two which is research your insurance one of the major costs besides fuel in this industry is going to be your insurance so um, insurance is is definitely a huge cost, huge expense, um, and it gets, it just keeps rising. No matter, even if you don't even have a claim the year before or, or, or years beforehand, um, it's not uncommon for your insurance to go up 8, 10, 12, 15% per year um, just because of the way the, the industry is going. So, uh, again, when you're in this type of business, it's very hard for somebody just to, um, you know, open up a shop and get insurance tomorrow uh, in the retail limousine industry space. Um, so insurance is very difficult. It took me probably three months, three to six months total to um, find insurance and compare insurance companies and finally bind. Uh, it's not like you just make a quick phone call to State Farm or Progressive, uh, although some states now Progressive is writing limousine insurance but uh, it's not like you just make a quick phone call to your current insurance. You need commercial insurance. And then on top of that, if you're getting into these big buses, you need $5 million limited insurance, uh, $5 million minimum insurance. Um, and it's, you jump into DOT, you jump into CDLs, uh, passenger ratings, all that stuff. So insurance is huge. Um, what you need to do is find an insurance broker who writes uh, insurance policies and then they are the only people that can contact these major companies that actually write insurance for the limousine industry um, I can call the company that uh, holds our insurance however um, they will not speak to me directly nine times out of ten they'll speak to only the agent in uh, my agent so they are the go-between they collect commission they get paid for it as well uh, and that's that's just kind of how things work so uh, research your insurance. You're gonna really need to look into um, insurance, what's required in your area. Um, city of Dallas has their own requirements. So each city, each major metroplex that you wanna operate in might have minimum insurance requirements. Uh, so you definitely wanna get with them and see what their minimum insurance requirements are so that at minimum you can operate in their city. Um, again, one of the major questions in the dumpster rental industry is insurance. Um, I can't do your homework for you. You have to call insurance brokers. They have to write the policies. They have to write your uh, applications up, submit them to the insurance companies, and the insurance company underwriters will look at it and will evaluate the risk, uh, and then we'll spit out a couple quotes, hopefully. Um, so that's that's kind of what you need to do. Um, find a good insurance broker, because that means the world. Uh, 
Number three is going to be research your competition. Uh, competition is huge. Uh, right now, again, it's the, the industry is kind of questionable. We're not 100% sure what uh, the industry is going to look like after this pandemic is over or, you know, hopefully uh, on the other end, right? But one thing's for sure is it's not going to be the same. Uh, there's going to be a lot of major companies that are probably either restructuring or uh, going out of business completely. Also, a lot of companies that are going to be coming into the industry. Uh, a lot of new people are going to be coming in, and they're going to be coming in from other industries that have also probably failed or been has, have taken a huge hit. So, uh, research your competitors. If, if, if somebody in your town does not have, and your town's big enough uh, to sustain it, but does not have a pink limousine, then maybe you want to get into the retail side of things. Maybe uh, your town doesn't have any party buses or limousine buses. Maybe your town... Um, you know, it's very hard to get an airport transfer to the airport because, uh, you know, it's just you have no taxis. You got to research your competition and see where the need is in your market. If there isn't a need, you're just going to spend money. Um, maybe you can create a need. Maybe you can create a new niche. But, uh, you know, I've always been a proponent or a, uh, of being a leader, not a follower. So, um Finding that need and being the first one it makes the biggest difference between um, quick money, I guess you can say, and long-term money or whatever you, you want to call it. But uh, if you find a need for sure and, and there's no other competition, then jump into it, you know, hand, all, you know both feet. But uh, research the competition, see what they're charging, see what they have as far as minimums is concerned. Um, this industry is very, uh, what do you say? This industry is very well known for having, especially the retail side of things, having minimum hourly rates or minimum standards. Uh, we were one of the first in our market to get away with that. We will do one hour, we will do a half hour, we will do two, three hours, whatever you want to book. We will do it. Our prices will reflect that though. So if you do one hour, it's not the same as if you do five hours for each individual hour rate. So research, research, research. Spend all the time you can Finding your, uh, finding your competitors, learning everything you can to learn about them so that when the day comes that you open the business up, um, you, you have a leg up, okay? Um, number four is your first purchase, okay? There's a ton of equipment out there right now. Again, lots of companies are shutting down. Lots of companies are unable to make their payments, unfortunately. Um, Buying something, if you have extra cash and you can pay cash, even better than, than than a loan because loans are very difficult to come by right now, especially for a startup. So if you have cash, um, you can definitely negotiate with a seller of a unit. Um, sometimes these guys, though, uh, they have high payoffs because they don't, you know, they, they own uh, or they, they have a loan on the vehicles and a lot of these guys don't put a lot of money down. Uh, and so... Uh, they have high payoffs. Sometimes you can find a used unit that's paid off for a lot less than a, a newer unit that's used because the owner has to still pay the mortgage or pay the loan on it. So better deals, a little bit older, but then again, you're getting older vehicles, um, more wear and tear on the vehicles. Uh, you know, so again, these are cars. So buyer beware. Um, what you see is what you get. There's no warranty on used vehicles. And, and, and double check because a company like Tiffany who is a who was a major player in the limousine industry as far as um, bills are concerned uh, they built lots of limo buses I have several of them myself they are now out of business uh, because of COVID um, so there is no warranty from the builder even if I, I have a 2020 sitting over there that has zero warranty from the builder because uh, they're out of business now so Again, research. Know not only your competition, know the industry. Know the vendors. Learn them. If you're not a member of any of the Facebook groups, look for the limo Facebook groups. Lots of people on there. Lots of good advice. And they've been going on for years. So uh, lots of history there. Uh, look in the search bar. Search whatever you're looking for if you don't want to ask a question. And uh, nine times out of ten, you'll find lots of good advice in there. So, um, what your first purchase if you can do it cash, do it because they, uh, unless you have uh, awesome credit, um, a lot of these lenders, it's very difficult to get a loan right now. So, uh, and then finally, number five 
is going to be marketing. You've got to market your limo company. Um, you can market it anywhere and everywhere that you can possibly think of, but the internet is going to be your number one. Uh, running an ad in magazines, running an ad in, I don't even know if people run ad in newspapers anymore, but uh, radio ads, TV commercials, all that out the window. Don't spend a penny on that. Build a website through Wix, through GoDaddy, through Weebly, um, whatever platform you want. Hire somebody on Fiverr.com if you, if you need to, but build your website, work on your SEO, um, use your family, use Facebook, it's free. Advertise as much as you possibly can. Let people know that you're starting a new business. Use Craigslist, they're $5 ads. Um, and if you've got to spend money, spend money on some Google AdWords if you want to, but that's once you know what you're doing. You can easily spend tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, on Google AdWords and not get a dime in return because you're not running the proper ads. So, um, word of mouth, uh, you know, in my industry, my business, I'll tell you right, right now, um, my best form of advertising is definitely going to be our website. It's going to be, our website is very strong. We have lots of keywords, but we've also been around for 14 years. So when we came in, we, we went heavy on the website, went heavy on the SEO, um, and um, that's gonna be a good portion of where we get our business from. But word of mouth reviews, um, com you know, customer referrals uh, is gonna be another major, major um, source of, uh, you know, clients coming to you or finding you. So put it out there. Uh, again, you're starting brand new. You've got a ton of those Facebook groups where uh, local town Facebook groups um, posting those on a regular basis. Some of them have different rules. Some only allow you to advertise on weekends. Some allow you to, you know, advertise once a month. Whatever it may be, make sure you're not breaking any rules of the group because they will kick you out. But um, you know, advertise as much as you can. Facebook Marketplace. Um, you know, there's a ton of places where you can advertise for free. Uh, and then create your free listings on Yelp, create your free Google My Business listing, create your free listing on yellowpages.com. Use all those um, online directories because each one of those will give you a link back to your website, which will make your website even stronger in SEO. Uh, and if you don't know what SEO stands for, it's search engine optimization. So when you type in need a limo in Dallas, um, search engine optimization is where your, uh, is what will allow your website to rank on you know in, in their organic listings or in the regular listings under the paid ads so you definitely want to um, show up there eventually it's not an overnight thing it's definitely not even a, a few months a thing it's a constant uh, job to keep your website updated to keep your SEO updated it's constant because the minute you start slacking is the minute another company will come and pass you up so um, Anyways, there's my, you know, real quick intro into the limousine industry, guys. Uh, please give me a like, give me a subscribe. I will post more and more of these uh, videos as time goes by. If you have any comments, if you have any requests uh, for a specific video in the limousine industry, um, I will do my best to create more uh, videos of content uh, or more, you know, more videos with great content uh, as far as the limo industry is concerned. So. Anyways, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and uh, until next time, we'll see you on the next one.